Hey everyone, this is Dr. Russo. I just want to make a quick reminder for you as you're trying to determine what the best diet for your individual system is, is that healthy foods may harm you. Now, healthy foods is a very kind of loose rubric, but two examples that are important to keep in mind are, one, foods high in fiber, and even though Oftentimes, foods that are higher in fiber are stereotyped as healthy, i.e. fruits and vegetables. For those with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, there is definitely evidence showing that these foods can be problematic. Now, it's not to say you go devoid of those foods completely, but there is clearly a trend where these types of foods seem to be noxious and irritating to those with sensitive digestion. And so the solution here is not going to either extremes in, in absolutist terms, but rather understanding that you may have a certain threshold for how much of these foods you can tolerate in your diet and do well. Now, another food that can be problematic or type of food are those high in what's known as histamine. And these again are foods that on the surface look healthy. These are typically fermented foods. So your uh, kimchi, your sauerkraut, your fermented beets, your kombuchas, which uh, kefir also, which all can be health promoting and good for you. But for some people, there's a threshold. Now, this also includes what I, what I term lazy man's paleo foods. Jerky, avocado are also high in histamine. Again, none of these foods in and of themselves are good or bad, but different individuals with different systems may thrive or not do well on higher or lower consumption of these foods. So keep this in mind as you're navigating kind of the dietary landscape out there. Unfortunately, the healthier consumer oftentimes seems to be given a narrative of Guru XYZ is all about diet A, and then you hear all of the reasons why diet A is so good for an individual, but it's rarely disclosed that this is just one of a few diets on offer that we as healthcare providers should be helping the individual assess the merits of. And so fruit, vegetable, and fiber intake can be health promoting. However, there may be a threshold and if people go over that threshold, they may flare themselves. It's important to understand that so you don't keep trying to eat a higher intake of fruits and vegetables um, because you've been told it's health promoting and rather identify what your threshold is and maintain that dietary balance. And then on the other side of the spectrum or uh, potentially on the other side of kind of the dietary philosophical spectrum. So if we have high fiber veganism here on the one hand, um, oftentimes in the lower carb paleo community, there's a real emphasis on these fermented foods that are oftentimes higher in histamine and those can also be a problem. Um, so I guess one of the fundamental points here epistemologically is to get away from one diet being the best, honor and understand that there's evidence for a number of different diets. And the goal should really be an individual having information about these different diets, being able to navigate through them and come away with a simple personalized diet. Also within this conversation, very important to mention, we want to avoid dietary neurosis, um, getting really wrapped up in, well, I can't have any histamine or I have to be very careful about fiber. Um, th 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 there's a lot of room for wiggle here. And um, this is something actually in a recent podcast with Paul Check, we, we kind of uh, pinned down one very important point, which was any value system, and this would include uh, dietary uh, systems, applied fanatically can oftentimes vector harm. So keep that in mind when you're navigating these different diets. They're not necessarily meant to be things that are followed 100% strict ardently, but rather a tool to enable you to run an experiment, learn what works for you, carry that forward, and then disregard the rest. So just a few tips here about common healthy foods that can give people problems and an acknowledgement that it's okay to not follow the dictates of one healthy diet, but rather listen to your system as you trial that diet to come away with the personalized 
way of eating that works well for you. This is something in the first section of the action plan on Healthy Good Health You, I lay out guidelines for how to determine what the best diet for you and your system may be. So just a few tips there about healthy foods, I guess when healthy foods attack, we can say, uh, and how you can better navigate that so as to come over with all the benefit and sans any of the dogma that is oftentimes um, attached to the narratives regarding diet. Okay, hope this helps.